Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome one, welcome all to SimSpeed TV. It is time for the next round of the SuitSpeed Sports Car Series for 2024 Season 1. The fourth round of the championship here at the Detroit Grand Prix at Belle Isle. One of the best street circuits in America. One of the few on the iRacing service. It is a tough concrete ride around uh, Belle Isle in Detroit. And we have got a big field of Delara P217s ready to take to it for two races tonight in what should be a very significant round of the championship if uh, previous races here at this circuit are anything to go by. Live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Kick, it's me, Reese Gardner. Jay Kennedy is with me in the comms box and handling production behind the scenes. Brady Baldwin should be back with us for next round. Jay, we love Belle Isle. Every time we come here, no matter what category, no matter what league, it turns out to be an absolutely stonking round of racing. Don't know we've, if we've ever had a bad race at Belle Isle. It is such a good circuit right up the top of America, not far from Canada, literally across the other side of the bay, across the side, other side of the river is Canada. So we zoom on into the island of Belle Isle. Very, very cool circuit. Changed a couple of times throughout its history, but this circuit is the most iconic. It's also, from memory, it's the original layout before they changed it and then went back it's not the original, it's very, very similar. But uh, 14, sorry, 13, 14 turns, yeah, I can count. Um, but the most uh, iconic section is around the Scott Fountain through 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. The uh, runs down uh, from 6 to 7 being the highest speed section. Run up to turn 3 as well, also very, very high speed. But it's a very, very technical circuit, very similar to the uh, street circuit styles we see in Australia. No runoff absolutely anywhere. Walls very, very close. And risk versus reward at the highest uh, of priorities. Indeed, yeah, there's quite a few of those bumps that are going to be catching the drivers out here tonight, particularly on the exit of turn two. That's a place where we often see drivers going into the wall because they've uh, gone through turn two a little too quick getting on the throttle too early and going over the bump induces some understeer and they collect the barrier. You're right though, there is uh, not much of any runoff around here. It's certainly not uh, a Formula One street circuit. Um, the runoff here is sparing at best and there's just tire bundles or concrete to greet you all the way around this place. A concrete canyon to be sure. Well, it is the fourth round of the series, Jay. And uh, Daniel Benefield continuing to lead the championship after the third round. Um, of course, his teammate Dan Yeaman is close to him in the standings there. But uh, Matt Keane and Dylan Walker still in the fight. Yeah, it's still pretty close. Uh, every position back from uh, Benefield and Yeaman at the top. But uh, I think tonight will be a bit of a, a round that'll that'll separate those guys a bit more. We're going to see the, the group settle a little bit. We're going to see a few drivers make positions. We're going to see some drivers really struggle. Just notice the likes of Seb Vandell, who's currently in eighth. He had a, a uh, non-scoring round last round from memory. He uh, wasn't able to attend. And tonight, he's done seven attempts at qualifying and hasn't done a lap yet. So he's really struggling out on circuit at the moment. So this will be a make or break round for him. Uh, AM Championship, though, absolutely interestingly close. 
I was trying to think of a really nice superlative to use there, and I couldn't think of one off the top of my head. Mm, yeah, narrow margins indeed between Daniel Finney and Dean Hunt. Daniel Finney had a fantastic uh, round last time out at Road America where we had rain in both races and a very wet track. Finney was super quick, so uh, he's managed to leap himself up into the lead of the AM Championship. Dean Hunt only uh, eight points behind him. Jackson Dial, who we've uh, seen have a very good season so far, still remaining in third, but the gaps are starting to extend there uh, just goes to show how much of a higher level those three are to see just how far back everyone else in the AM class is but that's not taken anything away from the likes of James Solani, John O'Kiley and Sean Bonici they've certainly had uh, uh, as much bad luck as anyone can tolerate I think the big difference for Finney last round was making sure he finished that first race inside the top 10 to get that uh, advantage in the reverse grid race so We'll no doubt see someone break into that top 10 and that could be make or break for the championship again for those guys. And uh, it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting one over two races again tonight. Absolutely. Two, of course, 115 minutes, 130 minutes with a reverse top 10. So you take the top 10 result from race one, flip it, and that's how they uh, start in the top 10 for race two. There will be a compulsory pit stop in the second race after lap three. Drivers have to take, at the very least, two tyres in their stop. Though, from previous rounds, uh, we've uh, largely seen them take a splash of fuel as well, just to make sure that they get to the end. Question is, at a track like Belle Isle, which two tyres do you take? I would think looking at the track layout, left side tyres is probably most important, but maybe you're wanting that little bit of extra turning on uh, on these very tight corners. So maybe taking fronts. What do you just go, I don't know what to do and just take four? Have your yeah. losses and just decide that's, to take all That's four probably tires. what I would do, to be yeah. completely honest with you. Yeah. Of course, uh, Suit Speed setting up this series, the primary sponsor. They do have a deal for you, Suit Speed, uh, manufacturer of sim racing gloves and uh, some nice apparel as well. They sell uh, some very nice t shirts. Use the code SPECTATOR at uh, suitspeed.com. When you check out, you'll get 10% off, including free shipping if you're in Australia or New Zealand. Get on that. Suit Speed, a fantastic company. Rich and Chris, um, the, the guys behind it, have uh, quickly become great friends with us here at SimSpeed. They're a, they're a good couple of blokes who are running a very nice operation, so uh, make sure to lend your support. Well, Seb Vandell and explains why he hasn't been able to get a lap in. He can't keep it out of the wall, it seems. They're just struggling to get the car hooked up there through turn 12. And he's basically got this lap to get a lap in. This is his last chance. He didn't have enough time to even reset and get back out on track. As, uh, yep. In the background, we see uh, an all too familiar side at Belle Isle, real world or not. Looks like that might be the end of uh, Barndell's qualifying run. Daniel Finney, meanwhile, first place in AM. He is a long way ahead of the rest of the AM class there. He's got seven tenths on Jackson Dial, and uh, he's solidly right in the middle of the pros. So Finney's mid-season is going fantastically. Like a switch has been flipped in the last couple of weeks, isn't it? He's just slightly scraped the wall there, but he, um, he's definitely found something in the last couple of weeks because the end of the round two weeks ago he, he was really strong he wasn't amazingly quick but he was definitely consistent and then last round was absolutely brilliant and used the strategy of the rain to his advantage really good good position to finish the night off so he'll uh looking to be looking to try and get another good result tonight yeah, that he will. Let's see how he goes towards the end of the lap. He did tap the wall a couple of times early on, so it remains to be seen whether or not this lap will count. It looks like it won't. He's heading into the pits, and that will be the end of Daniel Finney's qualifying. They still have plenty of drivers out on track at the moment, like this man here, Dylan Walker, and also Dylan Gray, too. Uh, Dylan Gray has shown himself to be a very st solid competitor in the Sud Speed Sports Car Series, but uh, Concrete is even more solid. Struggling with a bit of grip there, exactly the same. Another driver struggling with grip there. That's Eric Fenson just clipping the wall. 
So that's three of the four drivers we've looked at in the last little bit struggling for rear grip. Yeah, indeed. Seems like um, there's an awful lot of bite in the front ends of these cars, and it's all <laughs> even Walker is suffering from that as well. Um, you know, the, the bumps here are so harsh, and these cars are so stiff, even on their lowest suspension settings, that you really got to be gentle with the car through the corners. You don't want to be all loaded up and then go over a bump and get sent into the wall. Well, that's the end of qualifying. Everyone's... Uh, um, done as much as they can to put themselves in the best spot possible on the grid for the first race of the night pole position will go to drop bear motorsports lockhart brownlee i believe that is his first pole position of the season for Lockie. Uh, certainly has been competing up in and around the top five he'll be happy with that performance starting alongside his teammate dylan walker dan yeaman the manager of drop bear motorsports will start in third place alongside aiden luthwaite in the number seven who uh, still needs to look for a result to back up his fantastic pace that he's had all season long Daniel Benefield and Kyle Ridley will line up on the third row of the grid. Benefield, of course, the championship leader. Daniel Finney, driver of the day, last time out at Road America, alongside Matt Keane for SLM Motorsport, driver of the day from round one. Henry Fenson will start alongside David Turnbull to round out the top ten. There we go, back to Dylan Gray and Eric Fenson. One more driver in our pro class. We've got a lap in his Vinnie Nguyen. From there, we go back, the rest of the drivers that uh, did laps are AM drivers, so it's amazing the gap that Finney has had back to the rest of the AM. Jackson Dial being the leader of the rest. In 14th position outright, James Solani and Andrew Proctor, 15th and 16th position. Then we go back to Nathaniel Coburn and new driver to the series, Jimmy Middleton. Start from uh, 18th position, 19th will be Samuel Lambert. And then we've got Mark Hallowell and Seb Vandell. Last drivers not getting a lap time in. So 21 drivers on the grid tonight. About to roll away to start the race. Indeed, this is going to be a very tough round for Seb Vandell if he uh, ends up uh, taking to the grid. It doesn't look like he has, though. He might um, just have retired from this uh from this event. We do have our full Zoom wall here with uh, Dan Yeaman, Vinnie Nguyen, Sam Lambert, and Lockhart Brownlee joining us on the live video feed. He is hoping that we can check in with all of them at some point over the course of this night. My goodness, another beautiful field of cars making their way down the avenue up to the start finish line lockhart brownlee puts the power down and we are racing here at detroit belle isle for suit speed sports car series round four dylan walker falls in line behind but he was struggling with the rear end there it looks like dan yeaman has gained a tiny bit on his teammate is going to be pressuring him for second as they come into the braking zone at turn three luthwaite had a brief look at daniel benefield is very late on the brakes on the racing line but benefield defends side by side between matt keen and daniel finney we got a crash in the midfield looks like vinnie newen involved we've got james solani and david turnbull also having to get things going there and just at the back of the field ted vandell did start from the pit lane Right. He's now out on the circuit. So he has started. All 21 cars have made it to the grid. Okay. Good to see that Seb Vandell is out there. And uh, probably a smart thing to do, starting from the pits that far back in the field. If he started on the racetrack, then he might have been involved in that little melee at turn three. In any case, going uh, around the Scott Fountain now. Our leaders, Lockhart Brownlee, still leading the way. Dylan Walker has managed to gain a bit on Dan Yeaman over the course of the first lap. It is on behind, though. Matt Keane, Daniel Finney, Dylan Gray, and Henry Fenson all fighting hard over um, the seventh position running on the road. Who manages to keep it out of the wall? Looks like everyone for the time being. We also saw briefly Jackson Dial and uh, Henry and uh, Eric Fenson um fighting over 11th place it looks like eric has uh, actually lost out a place or two so it'll be on him now to try and get that back and he just might there because dial just collected the wall there coming out of turn two see there too henry fence and dylan gray dylan gray looked like he was going to give up the spot there to henry fence but all of a sudden come back through so 
That's a position gain there for Dylan Gray. And as you said, Eric Fenton now through on Jackson Dole. So the Fenton brothers have sit 10th and 11th. Remember, P10, reverse grid pole for race number two. Yeah, so Jackson Dial will be trying his darndest to try and get that position back, but he has collected some damage to his front left. This is the reason why we saw that crash at turn three. Oh dear, looks like just a miscommunication running three wide there. Real shame, and uh, there was nothing that uh, David Turnbull could do. He was stuck there on the outside, and there's a problem for Vinnie Newen. He's retired from the race. Don't know what's going on there. Do you think he's having a VR issue looking at what's happening on Zoom. So, uh, up on screen, you know, but yeah, he looks like he's have some, having some sort of VR issue. He's actually stepping away from his sim. So, unfortunate. The downfalls of VR sometimes are that they do give you issues, but when they're working well, they are working amazingly well. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason VR has become such a big thing in sim racing. Well, we check in with Lockhart Brownlee at the front of the field. Uh, looks like we've lost Mark Hallowell as well. Um, he's uh, pulled off the racetrack and retired. So already two drivers down, only 19 left circulating. This is the first of them. And it uh, looks like Brownlee is putting down some great laps at the moment just to extend that lead, give himself a little bit more breathing room. Looks like this is what happened to Hallowell. It was at turn four and uh, oh, he just caught the bump and got himself into the wall. I was absolutely destroyed. There was nothing left of it either. Lost the whole front right of that car. It's uh, absolutely torn to pieces. So. And no surprise to see that he'd had to retire that car. Yeah, these uh, prototypes are very fragile. They can take a beating. They are obviously endurance cars, but a concrete wall is the great decider of uh, any race car's lifespan. Well, we keep our eyes here on the number 10 chasing down the number 52, Dylan Gray, having uh, briefly made his way past Henry Fenson before now having to defend. And they still have Eric Fenson behind them looking to gain. Gray just a little bit deep in turn one. He's compromised himself through that entire complex. And now there's a nice run for Henry Fenson. This is one of the few places on the circuit where you can use the slipstream. This is a very high downforce circuit. So any drag you can take off the car is going to pay dividends for you. But it seems like Dylan Gray, just for the time being, can stay ahead. Also saw Jackson Dial in the pit lane. Looks like he might have taken a fast repair. Um, that car is now looking fresh as can be, and he'll have to circulate at the back and try and get a result from here. Yeah, he's going to have to hope for a bit of bad luck from other drivers, really, isn't he? And uh, also can confirm that Mark Hallowell is coming back out onto the circuit. We've got that battle between uh, Gray Fenton and Fenton for ninth, And then for 12th, 13th, and 14th, we've got this one as well, Proctor. Coburn and Middleton. As we said, Middleton racing his first race of the series. Great to have more drivers coming on board. And if you want to get in involved yourself, the uh, Discord link for the series is in the description of the video. So make sure you come and uh, have a crack. It's a, a very, very fun series. It is indeed. Absolutely blew us away when it came on the scene at the end of 2023. And um, uh, we've certainly been hyped for this second season. It's certainly had some fun races so far. Uh, fun enough as a spectator, even more fun as a driver. Well, Henry Fenson's still trying to chase down Dylan Gray here, and he's very deep on the brakes into turn three. Gained a lot of time there. It looks like even, um, even a little deep for Dylan Gray, but he's holding on to it. The tires will be up to temperature now with five minutes of the race done, and oh, he's trying to push, isn't he, Henry? But unfortunately, missing the apex, bringing him into the throes of a battle of the brothers. James Solani's just brought his car into the pits as well to get some damage fixed. So there's a spot for Dial after saying that he uh, needed a bit of luck to go his way to get some positions. Might be the way that you get some because it is a track that is very, very easy to draw you in to just pushing that tiny little bit further. It, it sucks you in to make you think you can go a tiny little bit more, tiny little bit more. And before you know it, you've put yourself in the fence. 
Yeah, the drivers that do well at Belle Isle, the drivers that are able to just ride that limit, even drive a little bit under it, because uh, it's often better to compromise a little bit of time and uh, not get into the wall. Um, that's exactly what this top five are doing right now. It's a top two breakaway of Lockhart, Brownlee and Dylan Walker, and Walker is pushing here to try and close the gap to his teammate, but Brownlee the fastest in qualifying seems like he's got this track sorted meanwhile Benefield the championship leader under pressure here from the number seven of Aiden Luthwaite and Benefield has compromised himself there coming onto the back stretch he was a little bit wide had to uh, gather the car up and this is the chance that Aiden Luthwaite will be hoping for it's difficult to make passes into this corner here it's a bit more open than you think, and you've also got that concrete barrier on the outside, so there's nothing that Luthwaite can do for the time being. Just needs to try and hold on, chase down Benefield, try and find a way past him at an easier opportunity, potentially turn uh, turn three. But Benefield is slowing him up now. Oh, he's hard on the defense, isn't he? Benefield doesn't look comfortable at all at this point of the race, which is very un -Benefield like Benefield's a, a lot more smooth and consistent than this normally so um just something like matching with the car also uh back about uh vinnie newen can confirm his uh vr headset did shut off midway through the corner so he had to uh wow. pull it uh pull the car over to the side did a great job of that without being able to see what he was doing and uh, was able to reset and uh, avoided any other cars being involved Indeed he did. Unfortunately, he hasn't emerged back onto the racetrack, so I think we can count him. It. Yeah, we can definitely count him as a retirement from race one then. Hopefully he gets it fixed in time for race two and we can see him back out there. Well, things have started to uh, come into the favour of the battle for ninth because uh, Daniel Finney has oh! been... Oh my god! Oh no! Okay. So Dylan Gray just hit the inside wall there. There was nothing that Eric Fenson could do to avoid that. It's just the element of a street circuit like Belle Isle. So Gray was probably thinking, yes, I can get a position from this and then immediately into the wall. Poor Eric Fenson, an innocent victim in all of that. And it looks like Fenson is in the runoff area down at uh, turn 10, I believe. This is the view on board from him. I mean, uh, there's, there's so little space, so little time to react. If you were in his position, I don't think you could have done any different. I agree. It's just uh, one of those unfortunate things, isn't it? It uh, is, and uh, into the painful. pits they go. Benson's still trying to get it back to the pits, but... Um, I think I've done that one before, Reese. Uh, I'm sure you've done that too, and mm -hmm. it's even worse when it happens in a race. Yeah, indeed. Well, that's another position that will go Jackson Dial's way in the end. And the battle will continue here for the number seven. Just jumping out of the way there is Mark Hallowell, who's uh, gotten back onto the racetrack after his early issues. Benefield now still trying to hold off that coveted fourth position from Aiden Luthwaite. And I think at this point in the race, there's less than five minutes to go. This is where you have to really start pushing. This is where you need to uh, try and gear up for a move. The issue for Luthwaite is the only chance he's really going to have is the exit of turn two. If he can nail that, then he can try and run up the inside of turn three. But you see that Benefield, I think, has gotten a little bit of comfort back. The gap has extended. You know, I think it's... Maybe that Benefield's a little bit better in the last couple of corners. Nev, right on cue, makes a mistake at turn one, uses the grass to get himself around the corner, uses that curb, and he's lost all of his momentum down the straight here. Luthwaite gaining in the draft, but not quite close enough. So almost a, a tale of two halves between these two. And again, another missed apex there for Benefield. So this, uh, this side of the track all favours Luthwaite. The other half of the circuit, well, the last couple of corners at least, definitely favouring Benefield. Yeah, so Luthwaite has to work on the second half of the lap there. And, oh, God, oh. that is a bit, that was a big slide there for Luthwaite, wasn't it? Almost sent him into the outside wall. I think if he can... Oh, oh, problem for Kyle Ridley. Big problem for Kyle Ridley. Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, front left of the car destroyed. 
I think he might have done the same thing. Actually that, had an uh, issue, a, a network issue, and disappeared um, from the server. Come back, oh no. and his car's in the wall. So he's had some sort Exchange of technical Solani issue. as well. Yeah, Solani around. Oh wow! It looks like Solani has managed to escape too much damage. So hopefully he'll be able to continue from here. Three minutes left on the clock. This for Seb Vandal is now up into tenth position. After starting from the pits, he's avoided all of the incidents going on around him. Is now in tenth. Yeah, like I said, a very smart decision to start from the pits. I mean, he was going to start from the rear of the field anyway, and uh, this uh, this way he does have a bit more time to react to incidents ahead of him. And he's got plenty of clear track ahead of him, plenty of time for warning, and uh, being able to work his way around um, around cars that are. Uh, having to recover. Middleton is uh, working his way through very nicely, up into 13th now after starting in 18th. Uh, not a bad run for his first go at this series. And he could potentially get Nathaniel Coburn here because Coburn, just hitting the wall, manages to keep the momentum up down the straight. But he will be in trouble if he keeps making mistakes like that. Very late on the brakes. Oh, too deep for Sam Lambert. Loses the rear. Looks like a compression lock. Oh. oh, no. And Jackson Dial comes sliding in and says, Hey, I'd, uh, I'd like to do the same thing, ideally. There's a... Look, that front... Uh, damaged, yeah, Sam's not happy about that. I think that, that second contact was what actually damaged his car. He hit the wall and it was pretty square on, but getting hit into the wall by another car, that's not, uh, not great. So, unfortunate for Sam. Yeah, indeed. Well, commiserations to Sam Lambert, who uh, joins the ever-growing retirements list from this She's first the race of the now. night. Indeed. This is for the last position in the top ten and race to pole position. Henry Finson uh, managing to work his way up to eighth in the midst of uh, all of the incidents that we've been seeing, and that's the reason why these guys have been promoted up to the coveted 10th position. A little bit uh, deep into turn one there for David Turnbull, but might be able to work his way past Proctor here. Proctor is defensive on the way into turn three, oh, he's and he's too deep. too deep. And there you go. That's a freebie there for David Turnbull. Proctor will manage to get it going again without causing further trouble. And now all Turnbull has to do is hit his marks and bring it home. It's just funny thing is, you say it like that. The way that this race has gone, that's easier said than done. Brownlee comes across the line to start the final lap of the race. Can he hold on to the win? It seems like everyone's trying to throw away their positions at the moment. We've seen Ridley do it. We've seen Gray do it. We've seen Lambert hit the wall. We've just saw Proctor throw away top 10 by outbreaking himself. Who's next? Oh, almost spoke too soon there, Jay. Brownlee was uh, so aggressive over the curb there at turn three. Looks like he's escaped the slowdown penalty, but uh, would have unsettled the car massively. He just needs to keep it out of those barriers. But man, he's, uh, he's uh, only leaving a few millimeters at best. Definitely pushing the limits. Not sure that he... Uh... Works out exactly where the, these limits are. Probably a little bit too late to work out where the limits are. You'd want to do that during practice and qualifying as opposed to during the race, but he's doing it very, very well right now. Is he going to be able to hold on? Only a couple of corners to go, but he's done a very, very nice job in this race. Yeah, indeed he has, and I think we can congratulate everyone on the podium here. It is a drop bear motorsport one, two, three, four at the very end of this race, and all Brownlee has to do is negotiate that final blend to the right, and he'll take the win in race one here at Belle Isle. Congratulations to Lockhart Brownlee, who uh, will definitely enjoy that uh, uh, big uh, haul of championship points. Sets the fastest lap on the final lap as well. And Yeaman, a very happy team manager there, getting on the podium and in the middle of a top four lockout for Drop Bear Motorsport. Car 702, David Turnbull, uh, if he can nail these last few corners, will finish in 10th place and nab himself pole position for race two. A couple more corners. Gee, I can tell you what, the marbles that are built up there at turn 11, turn 12, I should say, 
absolutely incredible the amount of marbles that are there so hopefully uh, see if they get cleaned up before the next race but yeah Turnbull will start race number two from pole position Proctor holds on to a very very quickly closing Jimmy Middleton so great job for Middleton in his first race that's a an A an AM class podium in the end for him finishes only eight tenths behind but as you said congratulations to Drop Bear Motorsport one two three four and a nice photo op for the socials um i'll tell you what uh it'll be interesting to see how they work their way through the field in this second race coming up very shortly so Results then. Brownlee, one and a half seconds ahead of Dylan Walker. Yeaman and Benefield, top four. Aiden Luthwaite finishing in fifth, and he'll be very happy with how that's gone for him. Uh, despite losing one position, at least he made it to the finish, which is more than can be said for a lot of the drivers here. Keen, Finney, Fenson, Vandell, and Turnbull rounding out the top ten. Vandell will be an interesting prospect coming into race two. 100%. It'll be great to see him up the 20 end. He hasn't had a stronger season as he did last season out uh, Proctor, Middleton, Coburn and Jackson Dial. That'll be a great race. Those guys in the uh, in the next one. Starting 11th through 14th. Eric Fenson ends up in 15th position. Of course, he had that damage from that incident with uh, Dylan Gray, Ben Solani, Sam Lambert, Mark Hallowell, and then uh, Paul Ridley and Dylan Gray both having issues at turn six. That one and of course we saw Vinnie Newman have technical issues unfortunately it looks like he's gonna to have to sit out the round still having those tech issues got a couple of drivers in for a chat race indeed we have I think we should start with our race one winner Lockhart Brownlee joins us well Lockie um, seemed like you had that down pat fastest in qualifying and controlled the race the whole way through yeah that was the idea um it's 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 Bella you can't do anything else other than processional really um so yeah just get it get on pole and just safely get around i guess um yeah good that we got one two three four for a drop there that was good but um yeah it's it's just keep it on the road keep it out of the walls keep it at least fast enough to keep it in front of um dylan behind me but um yeah that was good and yeah, the car's very stiff around here, which is certainly doesn't play nicely with the bumps. Were there, was there any occasion during the race where you found you were uh, sliding towards the wall? Because we saw that take out quite a few drivers here. Yeah, I, uh, in the fountain section a couple of times, just had caught myself running a bit deep, trying to push for a faster lap or whatever. It wasn't, wasn't worth it, so I, I backed off a little bit. But um, yeah, no, definitely the bumps and, and this car, it's, it's fun. But it's uh it's not the, the safest of combos. Um so yeah, they're definitely definitely risky, but um yeah, no, it was good though. And yeah, I heard a lot of um I haven't I obviously haven't gone back through the chat and the uh the replay to see the incidents that took place, but I mean it's, it's Bella. I was you expect that sort of stuff to happen. But yeah, race control race control was uh working their ass up there to um <laughs> to get the track cleared. Um but yeah, no, yeah, it's good. Yeah, indeed, and uh, I guess you're happy with the Hall of Championship points that have come from the race one win, because uh, ever since um, round one, I mean, you had a great round one, but rounds two and three didn't quite go your way. So I, I suppose you're enjoying this opportunity to get back into the championship fight. Yeah, yeah. So round two was, was a bit rubbish on my end. I, I sent it a bit deep on someone at the, uh, the hairpin and uh, got damaged. I then had to limp my way back to the pits and yeah, just scrape some points out of that round. I had a decent sprint race in that one, but in the uh, Road America, I had a terrible race. So I hadn't done enough practice in the in the rain yet. Uh, I'd been away and all that. So um, yeah, I came into that with clearly not enough practice and in, in the rain and yeah, it showed. So hopeful. I, I, I don't have two drop rounds, so I'll have to, to work my ass off for the rest of the championship to get back in it because um, Benefield's been racking in those points so yeah i've got i've got i've got the work cut out for me all right well best of luck for race two Lockie. thanks for joining us and uh hopefully we get another chance to chat to you at the end cheers hopefully you do <laughs> <It'll> be difficult <laughs> Anyway, Lock out Brownlee there, uh, winner of the first race. Tenth place on the road was Andrew Proctor.
And uh, man, uh, what a uh, uh, sorry! Uh, I got myself a bit messed up there, Andrew. Eleventh uh, for you uh, in uh, in the end. Um, it must have stung with um, the unfortunate outbreaking there at turn three. Ah, uh, that's just lack of practice. I had um, hadn't actually practiced defending anyone into there and went a bit too deep. Uh, and all it is. It's difficult to do, isn't it? I mean, these cars uh, don't have anti-lock brakes, which really doesn't play nicely with the nature of the track here. It's mostly concrete as well, so there's not much grip available out there. No, nah, not much, and the bumps in the road don't help too, so I was sort of pumping the brake to try and not lock it up, but nah, David was quicker and probably deserved P10 over me. Well, regardless, you've got uh, race two coming up for you. Do you think you'll be able to get a top 10 out of this? Is there any kind of plan you're going to execute when it comes to the strategy? Uh, no, nah, just keep it off the wall and try and keep a clean car. It seems to be the way to go. I got lucky with a lot of the quicker guys putting it in the wall and crashing out in front of me. So, yeah, Indeed. keep it clean. All right. Sounds like a good plan, Andrew. Well, uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully everything goes well for you. Great. Thanks, guys. Have a good have a good call. Andrew Proctor there, and finally, uh, Sebastian Vandell. Um, interesting decision from you there, Seb, to uh, start from the pits, but it turned out to be the right call. Um, I didn't mean to start from the pits. I went to go out and um, take some fuel out of it, and I said I missed the start, so I had to start oh, dear. from the pits, unfortunately. <laughs> Well, regardless, considering the amount of incidents we saw out there, maybe it was for the best that you were behind the rest of the field. Yeah, I think I only made like one or two overtakes and ended up in night somehow, so it might have been the right call, to be honest. Well, um, ninth place in race one, it means you're starting on the front row for race two. You were having some issues in practice and qualifying, couldn't quite get the lap together. Do you think that you've got a handle on this track now that uh, it's time for the money to be made in race two? Um, we'll see. I only got my PC back today, so I had to re-download it all, and it only finished downloading a couple of minutes before qualifying. I was trying to set everything back up all ready for um, the race, and so we've had like zero practice, so I was just trying to get up to speed in qualifying and didn't quite get a lap in, so. But we'll see how we go this one. Try to build a gap um, as far away from the, the front guys as possible. Indeed, well, uh, congratulations on getting a front row start for race two, Seb. Hopefully, you're still up there by the end. Thank you. We'll see. We'll see indeed. Sebastian Vandell, uh, reigning series champion. His uh, second season of Sued Speed hasn't gone his way at all, Jay. So uh, I think he'll be relishing the opportunity here to get a podium. 100% he'll be looking forward to, uh, to getting out there with the, the faster guys. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you'll acknowledge that those guys that are a bit more prototype heavy in their driving uh, are a bit quicker here. You'll be glad to have them start behind you. You might be able to defend and hold on for a podium. You may even be able to pick up a sneaky win. Um, one thing we haven't talked about, there is a possibility of safety cars. We could see some safety cars spice up the night. Indeed, we could. Uh, obviously, no safety cars in race one. Uh, I think just due to the nature of the incidents, we saw race control deciding that to just grant toes back to the pits without calling a yellow for the most part. But we have a longer race coming up and uh, a bit more time to sort things out through full course caution. Stay with us here on SimSpeed TV. We'll be back in just a few moments with the second and final race of the night here in round four of the Sud Speed Sports Car Series. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. 
iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. You're watching SimSpeed TV. It's round four of the Suit Speed Sports Car Series for 2024 Season 2, with, uh, of course, a big complement of drivers and a big complement of sim racing gloves and t shirts that you can get on SuitSpeed.com. Once again, you can use the code SPECTATOR at checkout on the SuitSpeed website. You'll get 10% off, including free shipping if you're in Australia and New Zealand. They also offer competitive international shipping rates if you're outside the Oceania region. Well, now we get into the second race of the night here. We've got 30 minutes on the clock with an inverted top 10 from race one. Um, compulsory pit stop for two tires as well. So this should spice things up quite a bit in terms of strategy. It's not just executing the strategy though, it's keeping it out of the concrete walls. We've already seen many, many incidents of drivers just losing it over the bumps and destroying their cars on those concrete barriers. I'm Reese Gardner, Jay Kennedy with me in the comms box and producing as we go through the grid for this second race of the night. Starting in P1, it will be David Turnbull in car 702. Seb Vandell started from the pits in race one, didn't set a time in qualifying. He's got a second row start. Fenson and Finney in third and fourth. And then we go to Matt Keane in fifth place, starting alongside Aiden Luthwaite, who pressured Daniel Benefield all race long in the first uh, competition of the night. Benefield and Yeaman will start on seventh and eighth. And the fifth row of the grid will be Dylan Walker and race one winner Lockhart Brownlee. From there on back, it is how they started. Proctor and Middleton in 11th and 12th. Middleton, of course, his first start in this series. He's already done quite well. Nathaniel Coburn and Jackson Dial, 13th and 14th. Dial will be looking for redemption here with Eric Fenson gaining heavy damage in the first race, starting alongside James Solani with uh, Sam Lambert and Mark Hallowell, two drivers who found the wall in race one, also looking for redemption here in race two. Kyle Ridley and Dylan Gray also suffered crashes. They will start from 19th and 20th, and Vinnie Nguyen uh, is not taking to the grid for race two. He's not been able to fix his VR headset, which is a real shame. Still, We've got 20 cars coming to the green flag here for the second race. Pace car will be coming in very shortly. It's only a short formation lap here. And we have 30 minutes ready to start on the clock here. When does David Turnbull put the power down? They're already trying to fan out for a little bit of extra position here as the green flag flies and David Turnbull leads us away for race two here at Belle Isle. Seb Vandell already defending from Henry Fence and side by side between Luthwaite and Keane. Uh, Luthwaite will get the position there coming out of turn two. Everyone avoids the turn two exit wall for the time being but will we see more incidents here at turn three? Vandell to the lead. He's gone a little deep though. Has to gather it up on the exit. That gives another chance to Turnbull, but everyone making it through, not without drama. Yeah, Dylan Gray just went straight ahead at uh, turn three there. He decided to just go straight on as there's contact there between whoa, whoa. Keane and uh, Yeaman. And Benefield takes <sighs> advantage, gets on through, and Brownlee couldn't get through. He's now being held up by his team boss. Yeah, this is going to be awkward here coming into this corner here. Three wide on the way in. Don't do it, boys. Yeaman will have to give way on the inside to Dylan Walker. 
just avoids getting into the concrete barriers there. Walker gains the position. Daniel Benefield already running away from this fight as Vandell is holding on to the lead out front. Turnbull still holding on to second. It's on for uh, fourth though. Daniel Finney and Aiden Luthwaite absolutely going at it. Coming to the end of lap one. That's a great run out of the final proper corner of the lap for Aiden Luthwaite. He'll get the inside coming across the start finish line. It's deep from Finney. He's trying to defend this for his life. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Keeps the position out of turn two. But again, it's a better exit for Aiden Luthwaite. Finney defensive once more. Great battle. This stage of the race. You see in the background there, that's Yaman trying to get some heat in the tyres. Luthwaite gets it done around the outside. Beautiful move. Now here comes Benefield to try and take advantage. Sorry, that was Yaman trying to warm up the tyres there at the back. Yeah, indeed. It's uh, these tyres start stone cold and around a concrete racetrack is certainly not ideal. But Vandell has wasted no time gaining a big advantage in the lead. We're seeing uh, two cars having visited pit lane, Nathaniel Coburn and Mark Hallowell. Hallowell just toured through the pit lane. Um, not too sure what the deal was there. Uh, the top four and top five have uh, started to space out here, but look at this very angry train of cars behind Daniel Benefield. Daniel Finney is uh, the one who's really the cork in the bottle here. Look at this on board here from Lockhart Brownlee as he tries to find his way past. He's got Yeaman and Walker up ahead of him. These three drop bear cars who uh, continued on to a top four lockout at last race will have to work together. Yeah, they're going to have to work very, very hard together. They're going to have to time their pit stops perfectly as well. Try and get these positions. Because the team, Brownlee hasn't gained a single position from where he started. Remember, he won race one. And he started this one in 10th, still in 10th now as Luthwaite has got past Fenton. Aiden Luthwaite's having a very good race here, but he's gathered it up onto the barrier. Um, that almost allows Fenton back by, but they've sorted themselves out there. That little bit of side-by-side -side giving a big chance to Daniel Benefield to try and work his way up. Benefield needs to get as many points as he can. He's the championship leader. Dylan Walker, meanwhile, trying to find his way past Matt Keane here. And he's on the racing line where the rubber is in the braking zone, but he can't get alongside here. And this is a very much follow the leader section. Got to be careful of the bumps coming through the Scott Fountain. Yep, the bumps are very, very aggressive here. The concrete is not really maintained throughout the year. So the cracks, bumps, gaps, you name it, it's there. And it's very, very aggressive on the cars, the suspension bottoms out in numerous points throughout that section. I saw Henry Fenton is in the lane. Remember, the pit lane is open. DPS pit window is open at the end of lap two. Start of lap three. This is the end of lap three, so the pit window well and truly open. Walker, Yaman, Brownlee, and Eric Fenton, Henry Fenton all in the lane. Right, so that's three out of our four Drop Bear Motorsport cars that have decided to take their stop nice and early. Everyone here will be trying to get clear air and... Uh, stake their claim to moving up further on in the race the fight's still continuing out on track for position Aiden Luthwaite has lost touch with David Turnbull in third and uh, he'll try and catch him up good drive from both of these guys in the first race as the pit stop is complete for everyone who decided to come in it looks to me like leading the way out is Henry Fenson, but a bit of time lost for Dylan Walker and Lockhart Brownlee. Yeaman has managed to get ahead of Walker through the pit cycle. That'd be the difference between taking two and taking four tyres. I'm going to guess the guys that have come in at this early stage would have only taken two tyres. Guys that'll stay out longer are more likely to take four. Yeah, yeah good see, point you, there. You wouldn't really take four tyres if you've only done three laps on them, would you? No, certainly not. You've still got plenty of, uh, of grip and pace left in the tyres that you do have. Benefield is going to follow his teammates in on this lap. And whew, that's a lot of curb usage there for Dylan Walker. So Benefield, Finney, Ridley and Solani all in the lane here. Ridley uh, coming to a stop. Solani on the pit limiter. And Dylan Gray already up five spots here. Will gain four more. Uh, three, uh, to the uh, two more, sorry. Um, I don't think my positions gains like in the, uh, the, the classes here. 
All right, fair enough. Well, uh, in any case, Dylan Gray is going to try and run long here. David Turnbull in second place now has his mirrors filled with Aiden Luthwaite as they make their way into the fountain section, just avoiding the curb. Want to try and keep the car on a stable platform through this section. They're so stiff. There's so much power going through those rear wheels that you can't afford to take the bump. So I'm seeing a, t a spin for Eric Fenson, meanwhile. He's gone around at turn three. Two cars having made their way past him, Solani and Coburn. That's a big shame there for Eric. He was doing a nice job, wasn't he? He was just being consistent. He didn't uh, bring anything silly. He was just uh, going around and he's done this one all on his lonesome. He has just uh, on the brakes, compression lock on the way in, maybe locking the rears slightly. And around he went. Dangerous spot to be stopped, but the two cars that came up on him were very good at avoiding it. There's the pass for second place. Aiden Luthwaite makes his way past David Turnbull. Nicely done. Yep, very, very nice move in the end there. So Luthwaite now into second. Go back to this battle here. Benefield, Fenson, Yeaman, and Walker. Oh, we've got a caution. Oh, has okay. Been because we've got Nathaniel Coburn stuck on the side of the track. That's the end, exit of turn six, the run to turn seven. Yeah, heavy damage to the left-hand side of the car. And, uh, yeah, it looks to me like he uh, missed the apex, just went on a slide on the way through, couldn't get it uh, gathered up before he hit the outside wall here. So just a bit too late on the brakes, bit too much speed into the tyres, and that's the front left gone. And he couldn't get it out of the concrete barrier there. So race control has called uh, the full course yellow. The pace like car will the emerge from the pits. Yeah, good to me. Would not turn at all, so no surprise there. And uh, yeah, safety car out on track. Yep, of course, in suit speed, there are no manual cautions. It's iRacing controlled pace car cautions, which means it's going to be run to oval rules. The uh, drivers who haven't pitted yet will uh, have to wait until everyone is together before pit road opens and they can take their stop. Now the question is, do you decide to take your pit stop under caution? Because with everyone already together as much as they are, the ones who have already pitted will be at the, the greatest advantage here. Sam Lambert is uh, going into the pit lane, but I don't think that's the right decision. He is going to get an iRacing issue black flag from that. I if you may not have had a choice. Maybe. But, uh, if he's running a little short on fuel or something like that, he's just decided to short foot tank and take fuel while he takes his tyres. But uh, yeah, that's... Uh, the other part of that too is the penalty for hitting under a closed pits is uh, end of line penalty. If you're going to drop to the back anyway, you might as well get it done when there's no one around you and then you don't have to stress about it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's that's not fair. the worst penalty if you're at the back. Yeah, indeed. Sam can uh, just tour around and take advantage of other people making mistakes from there. One thing about these cars, Reese, you cannot complain about not knowing you're under safety. No, certainly not. That's uh, certainly uh, right in your face there. As is the safety car itself in Seb Vandell's view. I think there's that Porsche look from yeah. the, the seat of Seb Vandell. You know that these cars sit low, but I don't think you realise how low they are until you've got uh, a non-LMP in front of you. Well, yeah, that, that's something that I've always been intrigued by is that prototypes, when they're on the track on their own, they look a lot bigger than they actually are. You put them next to a normal car, um, you know, uh, in, in the case of these cars, it'd usually be a GT3 spec machine. You actually realize they're not that much bigger at all. Um, if anything, a little bit smaller than, uh, than regular sized cars. So, yeah, um... Little little bit of trivia there for you. You put these cars alongside anything else, you really get a sense for how tiny they actually are. And um, I think it also goes to show how narrow this racetrack is, because even even when these cars are on their own and racing around here at full speed, they absolutely dwarf the racetrack. No surprise to see that our top five have decided to come into the pit lane. That does leave Andrew Proctor, Dylan Gray, and Jimmy Middleton yet to take their stops. I 
can't see why you wouldn't have come in. When, when do you come and, and take advantage? If you don't pit now, you should have to pit on basically the last lap. Would that be the only time you could do it when the field spread at, at its most? Even then, yeah. you're not going to gain all that time back, are you? No, you're not. You'd have to concentrate on maximizing your pace and hoping that you can build a gap to work with when you do come out of the lane. So good decision from uh, Seb Vandell, Aiden Luthwaite, Matt King, David Turnbull and Jackson Dial to make their way advantage. in when they did. They can take advantage of the field being bunched up because it's easier to make overtakes, whereas Proctor, Gray, and Middleton, who all still have to make their pit stop. Field's going to be stretched out, so if they drop back in near the back, they're, they're going to have to work extra hard to get positions. I guess if the field spread as well, it might be easier because they'll just make those those gains, but cars that they're trying to overtake don't have to come back into the pit. So it's such a huge time loss. It's around about half a lap that you lose uh, in a pit stop at this track, so... Um, yeah, I think it's not quite the right call, but I mean, we've been surprised by pit stop calls before. We may be surprised today. Indeed, we might. If there is another caution, uh, then that potentially will be the chance that they need to at the very least minimize the damage. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Regardless, lights are out on the pace car, which means we'll be going green when we get to the start finish line. Vandell, our pole sitter, re-emerging all the way back in 13th place. Now, his race one was defined by just minding his own business. He said, of course, between races, he only made two on-track overtakes. The rest of them were due to drivers making mistakes and crashing in front of him. So he'll be hoping that the same is true here. Hoping for his sake that it's true. We, we don't really hope that that happens because we never want to see drivers no. crash out of the race, but this track lends itself to it. There is a high probability to see a few drivers crash out. The safety car will pull away this time. We'll get back to racing. There'll be about 15 and a half minutes to go. When we get going, I think it's about 13 or 14 laps. Still plenty left in this race. Yep, plenty of time to get your moves done, plenty of time to take advantage of others' errors. Andrew Proctor is going to lead us away here at the end of this safety car lap to begin lap nine of race two here at Belle Isle. Single file, you can already see that Daniel Benefield is looking to find his way past Jimmy Middleton here. On the power they get, and oh no, there's a massive accordion effect. Benefield, I think, tried to go early, but it didn't work out for him. Big damage for the championship leader. Wow, that's huge. He's dropped back to 12th and gonna drop even more positions. So Benefield, He's actually got a mechanical black flag from that oh, race. Oh no! So that's huge for him. He's going to have to come back down the lane. He's still got his spare car, thankfully. It's going to be huge for him and hurt his championship. This has opened the whole race up and opened the championship up some more. Henry Fenton now leads. Dylan Gray back to third. Oh Andrew no! Proctor in the in the, sorry that was Jimmy Middleton in the wall. Proctor's back to fifth. He is. Henry Fenton leads the way, but he just caught the wall on the exit of uh, turn six. So Dan Yeaman now faces the opportunity to get into the lead. This is the on board here from Mr. Benefield. Yeah, and you can see they, they tried to go early, but the leaders hadn't gone yet. So yeah, they were a little bit too quick off the mark there and Benefield getting rear end damage for his troubles. He's still struggling to get that thing back to the pit lane. And David Turnbull's just had some problems as well. That's a massive shame there for David. Um, who had only just uh, come out of the lane a lap or two ago. So this is the view back from our new leader, Henry Fenson. Across the line he comes, has to try and keep Dan Yeaman behind him, but the drop bear cars are looking very quick around here. Tries to nail the exit from turn two. Didn't have the space to uh, pummel the exit. Let's see if Yeaman can try and find his way here at turn three. He's on the brakes at the same time as Fenson. And one thing he would have noticed is that Fenson has a habit of pushing a little too hard into these corners, which can destroy your race here. What I'm surprised about is how much of the curbs that these guys are using. They're willing to throw themselves up in the curb and get the cars bouncing. We don't normally see that in these sort of cars. So 
Um, I guess that may be where we're seeing the cars slide as much as they are because they've compromised a little bit setup wise. Is Andrew Proctor now facing the wrong way? They've compromised the setup to enable the bounce, which is then causing the slides that we're seeing from these guys as well. Indeed. Uh, it's a big shame for Andrew Proctor, who uh, once again um, lost the rear coming into turn six, which we've seen a few times today. Seb Vandell couldn't avoid him and got right into him and now has damage from that. Uh, it compromised Eric Fenson as well, who's lost a few positions out of it. Ypsilanti's just slammed into the wall as well. And straight ahead at turn 11. But, oh, it's uh, David Turnbull facing the wrong way. And Jackson Dial as well. Oh, my goodness. Oh, We're no. We're caution here, I think. Yeah, I think we might. Cars will be coming through at full racing speed there. Uh, they will be aware of uh, stopped cars. Still waiting for the call from race control here as we check out what happened to Jackson Dial. He was already slow. Looks like he might have... Uh, caught the wall at turn six potentially and just missed the corner completely and uh well david turnbull was an innocent victim there big big moment has just happened as well dylan gray watch this and the outside comes dylan walker tiny little bit of oh. contact gray squeezes oh, this... walker and then oh this is chaos send it is yeah, I mean, I've, the, the, the last few laps have just been a blur for me. If you asked me what happened uh, a lap ago, I wouldn't be able to tell you. It's just so much has happened in the space of a few minutes since this caution it. ended. I can answer what's happened in the last little bit. Plenty. That's all you need to say. Yeah. Benson and Gaiman <laughs> have now got company as well. Kyle Ridley's caught up to the back of these guys. And have a look at the run Whoa. that Gaiman's got. My Lord, that's a good exit there from Dan Yeaman. Henry Fenson will have to be defensive again coming into turns one and two. Has to nail the exit of the second turn and negotiate the bump, but he catches the curb. A little bit of instability. Yeaman now has to find a way past. This is a move for the lead that we're seeing here. Yeaman gets into it, and he's ahead of Fenson when they get to the braking zone. Has to run a little wide here just to give him room. Caught the tyre bundle there, and Kyle Ridley will fancy a move at getting into the top two. I was so close to the wall there for Yeaman Ridley. Gave him the exact amount of room he needed. Now, Fenton, did he hit the wall there at the exit of turn five? I don't think he did, but he was very, very compromised. This run down to turn six. They've all made it through okay. They can breathe for a second. Yeah, so can we. Dust. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't think there's a single car out there that doesn't have some kind of uh, at least body damage on it now. So many of our drivers have uh, had to negotiate an absolute melee coming off of this caution. What can Yeaman do to find his way past? You know, Lockhart Brownlee described this, uh, the racing here as processional, and that's something that I think anyone would say about Belle Isle. You have to count on a mistake from the driver in front, and this is where Fenson lost out last lap, but he nails the exit this time. So Yeaman will have to work a little harder to find his way past into the lead. I don't think you really wait for a mistake from your, your opponent. You almost have to entice them into a mistake, don't you? You have to try and try and do something that they're not thinking about, which then forces an error. That's how you get the moves done here at Belle Isle, especially when you see Fenson. He's locked oh. it up. Oh, oh, he's made it around the corner, though, somehow. Three wide. Oh, only for a moment. And there goes Yeaman. Wow, absolutely flung it up the inside. That was a fantastic move. And now Fenson has to try and gather it up. Otherwise, he's going to lose second place here from Ridley. Yeah, Ridley's right there to pounce as well. He almost threw it up the inside there and followed Yeaman through, but decided to back out of it. Seeing Yeaman, he's just had a big sigh of relief because he actually got the move done. I don't think he was expecting it to get done there, but Fenson has done a great job defending that position. But again, enticing mistake out of your opponent is how you get moves done. We just saw it there perfectly. Henry Fenson made the smallest error through turn three, locked the brake, somehow made the corner. But now he's got to defend from Kyle Ridley. Can he hold on for nine and a half minutes? And I tell you what, look who's coming in the background. Look out, Brownlee's not far away from these guys too. Race one winner, Lockhart Brownlee. He's got the circuit sorted better than anyone else out here right now. And he is fancying a look at a podium place and could end up being the round winner. Yeaman now has a little bit of lap traffic to deal with as Dylan Walker makes his way into the mechanical lane. He's gained damage. Yep, mechanical black flag for Dylan Walker. 
Benefield has already completed his uh, second stop to get his damage repaired, and now it <laughs> looks like Fenson is uh, showing his nose here and a little bit of frustration as Andrew Proctor struggles to stay out of the way. Lock up Brownlee's and breathe. Right. Yeah, lock up Brownlee's right there now to take advantage as well. Now, while this is going on too, Ed Van has got a bit of a group behind him too. Daniel Finney, the the uh, AM class leader. Guess who he's got with him? Aiden Luthwaite, who we saw do a great job at the start of the race, but strategy just hasn't quite gone his way. No, it hasn't. Luthwaite, um, one of the one of the drivers here that uh, pitted a little bit later. Um, Get it under the safety under, car. Yep, under the safety car. So he's having to fight his way through here. Not much he can do versus Finney in this section of the circuit. There's no way you can find your way past in these cars through these last couple of corners. But maybe if he nails the exit, he can fancy a move at turn one or maybe turn three. Tiny bit of slipstream coming down the start finish straight on the brakes. Flow your way in, but he's wide. He's on the marbles. Oh, no. That's Aiden Luthwaite now having to gather it up and have another go. Meanwhile, Yemen is running away in the lead of the race. Brownlee has caught right up to Fenson and Ridley. The Brownlee's there ready to pounce and steal another podium away from someone else. Only seven minutes to go. Five laps we're predicting to, to go in this race. You can almost hold on for five laps around this track if you nail the important corners. The issue is they are very, very difficult to nail each and every lap. Even the leaders aren't getting them nailed throughout the race. We saw Brownlee in race one. Even Yeaman at the moment is still making small errors. That could be enough to lose a spot in this pack. Indeed, it could. Saw from race control that Dylan Gray has been given a penalty for causing contact. Lap 11, turn three. Uh, I think that was... Um, the contact with Dylan Walker. Yeah. Yeah, coming off the uh, end of the caution. Well, less than seven minutes remaining. If you're Lockhart Brownlee, you're looking at these drivers ahead of you and thinking, OK, this is going to be a hard slog. Need to try and nail my marks, find my way past somewhere, somehow. If you can get on the podium in both races tonight, that'll be a fantastic round for him. At the very least, it's going to be close uh, between him and Yeaman for the round winner title. Um, of course, Yamin finishing in third place in race one. There's a pass. Oh, wow. Finney's just um, made a mistake. Yeah, he has. And uh, Aiden Luthwaite trying to find his way past him, but they're still side by side coming into turn five. Finney will keep the position, but round the outside, power down for Aiden Luthwaite. Gets it done. Beautiful stuff. That's brought Matt Keane right into the midst of the battle for sixth. And Gray's in the pits to serve that drive through penalty for that contact. Yeah, Matt Keane's all of a sudden, where does he come from? I don't even know how he's got himself into this position, but he's now there, and he's got the most pace out of anyone in this group. Anyone behind Luthwaite, he's got the most pace out of. So Matt Keane would potentially steal this position away from Finney and Luthwaite. He uh, can keep it controlled here over the next couple of laps. Absolutely, he could. Well, Matt Keane still can't find a way past... Yeah, you're right, Jay. They are using way more of the curbs than I expected. I mean, I, I would have thought that these cars would not be able to handle something like that as yeah. Van Dell sets the fastest lap. Interesting to see that that's happened because we did get some damage earlier and he still got it on the car, I think, unless he decided to take his fast repair uh, when he came no, he in. Didn't. He didn't use no. the fast repair. I can confirm that about... Half the field have used their fast repair. Eric Fenson, Daniel Finney, Seb Van Dale, Lockhart, Brownlee, and Daniel Yeaman, the only drivers that have not used their fast. Oh, here comes Lockhart, Brownlee on Kyle Ridley, side by side. Coming into the fountain section, Brownlee just hangs back, allows Ridley to get into the corner. You don't want to force another driver wide there, otherwise both of you will likely be taken out. Brownlee just using all of the curb and more. Yeah, and all of the bumps as well. You see how much his car's bouncing around. He's uh, obviously got that car set up pretty well to handle the bumps, but 
As I said, I reckon the compromise that the guys have got for the bumps is that the cars are very, very slidey. They're, they're struggling for rear grip. So obviously the, the pro is that they can get over the curb and get over the bounce, but negative of that is they can't really control the car on corner exit and have to compromise it a little. I don't know which I'd prefer. If I'm being perfectly honest, I don't know which one of those two I'd prefer, whether the car can handle the bumps, whether the car can uh, survive at the corner exit. I think I prefer corner exit. Yeah, I'd, I'd prefer corner exit as well. I mean, you know, you can deal with um, exit with entry over steer around here, and if anything, that's what you want for a, yeah. a street circuit with so many tight corners. As long as the car's stable on corner exit, you're totally fine because you'll be able to take advantage of that extra little bit of docileness in the car. Only three minutes left on the clock, and there's uh, still plenty of positions to be worked out here. The two main battles are between Ridley and Brownlee for third, and this one between Finney and Keane for seventh place. Um, Matt Keane, I think, he caught up to Finney and Luthwaite because they were so busy battling with each other. He's been having trouble keeping in touch with Finney ever since Luthwaite made the move to get up into sixth. Both battles on screen right here. And I'll tell you what, I think the battle for third might soon have a third uh, contender here. Because Brownlee's not been able to get past Ridley. You see the white machine of Seb Vandell, the reigning champion, creeping ever closer. We've just seen he did the fastest lap, backed it up with the second fastest lap of the race. So uh, he's got some very, very good pace in that car. And amazing when you consider what he said to us in the, the break between races, that he's only got his computer back today and been doing practice since basically the qualifying session started so he's doing a very very nice job this track experience around this track probably helps and being that he drives the uh, the iRacing I Australian touring cars quite a lot probably would have driven this track quite a lot as well yeah of course the big V8s love to have a race around here almost every single season in hosted and official it's getting ever closer here. Brownlee frustrated, not being able to find his way past Ridley, who's doing a great job on defense, but up the inside at the hairpin. There goes Lockhart Brownlee. You don't usually see a dive there in these cars. He's going to... Oh, oh no. no! Oh, my God! Still keeping it side by side. Both of them have gotten away with it, though with damage, that has promoted Seb Vandell into third place. Two laps to go still. I was wondering whether we were going to receive the white flag there. We did not. They will continue on. Seb Vandell, I'll tell you what. How's that for right place, right, uh, right time? Um, surprising as well. Brownlee looks like he might have got away with that damage free, but uh, Ridley has picked up a mechanical black flag. Positive for him, though. The amount of time we got left in the race is uh, a positive because he won't have to come in and serve that mechanical black flag. Yeah, indeed. That's such a shame here between these two, though. Um, oh, wow. Okay, one How of the Fenson spun there. That was Henry Fenson. Yeah, so much curb from Lockhart Brownlee. I think he was expecting um, Ridley to uh, just yield the position, but Ridley kept his nose in it around the outside. Henry Fenson was the car that we saw spun there. That's promoted Seb Vandell to second. Lockhart Brownlee now back into third spot, and I think him and Yeaman will now be equal on round points. Fenson, that's heartbreaking for him because he was doing a brilliant job and deserved the podium. But smallest of errors. Oh, Vandell hit the wall, avoiding him too. So that yeah. uh, could be enough. Will it be enough for Brownlee to maybe steal the spot? Last lap, Heyman is through, sees the white flag. Will there be enough time for Brownlee to come on through? Remembering that Brownlee probably, we don't know for sure, he probably would have some suspension damage. But look at how much time Ridley has lost. With his mechanical black flag, fourth is the best that he could hope for now. Aiden Luthwaite is closing. He is. Luthwaite could grab himself a top four out of this. Um, and I tell you what, it'd be a nice consistent round for Aiden Luthwaite if he can get that done. And Ridley is uh, is massively compromised here. He ran two seconds slower 
than even Lockhart Brownlee, who himself is dealing with some damage. So uh, it's, it's going to be all on here for Aiden Luthwaite. See if he can nab that position by the very end. Very compromised is Ridley, and the twistiest, most dangerous section of the circuit is coming right up for him here. How much time he loses through this section. He's doing a good job at the moment. He's still got three seconds of advantage, but... Go to the front because Dan Yeaman is about to come up to the line. Actually, Finney and Keen are still going at it, but Yeaman he is absolutely relieved. It's a win. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> Was relieved to even make his way past that leading battle, which, uh, you know, is uh, certainly good for him. Seb Vandell finishes second and Lockhart Brownlee in third. Ridley will just hold on to fourth spot. You can see how damaged that car is. Daniel Finney is going to hold off Matt Keane. Once again, Finney uh, head and shoulders above the rest of the AM class here. He's done incredibly well. But uh, the celebrations can begin here for Dan Yeaman and Lockhart Brownlee, who I presume will be uh, more or less equal on round points um, coming out of this round. At the very least, uh, fantastic round for Drop Bear Motorsport. Of course, race two was a little bit more drama filled for them, but at the very least, they got cars on the podium in both races. Drama filled is probably an understatement as well. We've had a lot of understatements tonight, but absolutely entertainment plus action plus for the night. This one and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Get to do our race results. Indeed, we will. Dan Yeaman started in eighth place, finishes in first. Seb Vandell managing to uh, keep second spot, and that is uh, certainly a, a result he'll be very happy with there. Lockhart Brownlee will make his way into uh, third place, and Carl Ridley and Aiden Luthway round out the top five. Meanwhile, Henry Fenson, he could have finished second were it not for that mistake on the penultimate lap, but still a top six uh, is nothing to sneeze at. Finney wins the AM class. Keane, Benefield and Walker round out the top ten. You have to wonder if things would have been different there for Benefield and Walker. And Taylor Woe for everyone on back. Eric Fenson finishes in 11th. James Solani finishes in 12th. And then Dylan Gray getting that black flag penalty for contact with... Yeah, the car of Dylan Walker, which is in 13th, but does finish on the lead lap. Andrew Proctor, Jimmy Middleton, one lap down, then a tail of Wolf and Nathaniel Coburn, Jackson Dahl, David Turnbull, Sam Lambert, and Mark Hallowell. Wowee, what a race that was. Yeah, what a race indeed. And uh, I think um, we'll give out our secondary award here for the driver of the day. And it um, seems like pretty unanimous agreement, uh, Jay. And we have to give the Driver of the Day award to Seb Vandell as uh, Dan Yeaman's victory celebrations uh, lose him the front bumper of his car. Um, it was just a great drive for Seb Vandell, wasn't it? Started last uh, in race one, managed to work his way up into a front row position for race two and held on to second from there. Absolutely brilliant drive and deserving a Driver of the Day and I think you can grab him for a Indeed I can. We will talk to Vandell first. My goodness, Seb, that was a bit of a chaotic race for you. Um, deciding to take the pit stop under safety car, obviously uh, by the time the caution came out, wouldn't have been smart to stay out and pit under green. I think chaotic's a bit of an understatement there, but um, yeah, definitely um, got a bit screwed over with the strategy there with others pitting before the safety car, but um, still ha really happy with the result to get back to second. With someone it was re really good fun battling in the pack there certainly was you had a couple of heart attack moments as well very uh, close avoidance there with uh, henry fenson on the penultimate lap oh yeah definitely that was a bit of a tight squeeze um in between the wall and his car but um yeah definitely a heart attack moment for sure <laughs> well the heart attack i think was worth it because we've decided to name you driver of the day for this round um, I think uh, you, you, you should definitely be proud of the moves through the field that you made in race one and being able to hold on to a podium spot despite that uh, unfortunate strategy in race two. Yeah, cheers guys. I appreciate it. Um, it was definitely a good race and um, congratulations to Dan on the win. He drove awesome. He deserves it. Indeed. Well, Seb, is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we let you go? 
Um, yeah, just all the boys from Vermilion Motorsport. I don't quite know the sponsors yet, unfortunately, but um, yeah, just all the all the boys from the team. It's been um good to have them take me on board, and it's been a big help. Indeed, it has Vermilion Motorsport growing their driver roster massively in the last uh, few weeks. Well, Seb Vandell will go to celebrate his driver of the day and podium. We'll bring in Dan Yeaman as well, the uh, winner of race two. It was a great round for you, Dan. Certainly had your dramas like pretty much everyone in the field did, but can't be unhappy with a third and a first. Uh, no, not at all, Rhys. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously tonight turned out we were, uh, as a team, looking really strong. Um, so settling into P3 ended up being about probably where I could have been uh, in that grand scheme of things. And um, I mean, it looks like, yeah, un unfortunately for my other guys, I was able to be the first one that didn't get entangled on that uh, that restart there, able to just uh, follow Henry uh, by going, well, go around the outside there whilst everyone else was checked up on the inside line uh, and then be able to make the most of it from there on. Yeah, Race Control is going to be reviewing that restart post-race. But uh, going back to you, Dan, um, certainly race two um, was chaotic to say the least. Um, I think Seb Vandell said it was uh, an understatement uh, to call it chaotic. What do you think was the uh, the closest you came to having the race not fall your way? Um, there were a couple of times there trying to find a way past Henry. Uh, from a period where I probably overdrove it a couple of times and did clip the fence uh, on a few corners. Thankfully, it was all minor taps, but easily could have, I think something like that there, if I just gotten in my head a little bit too much, easily could have overdriven it and given myself some proper damage uh, that would have uh, either set me back in the pits completely or at least really made uh, a, made a mess out of the run there at the end. Second in the championship coming into this round and a fantastic haul of points uh, plus uh, a not so great uh, round for Mr. Benefield means that you guys are actually almost locked together for the title uh, coming into the mid phase of the season. I mean, yeah, as it so happens, I think there's a drop brand that does put Dan uh, back out in the clear uh, at this stage. So uh, if we're thinking championship, we're going to have to uh, keep putting in really consistent results and and something's probably going to have to happen again, which is not what I certainly would want for my own guys, <laughs> just even though they're competing against me. So certainly the, the mission will just be to keep putting my best foot forward and just need to see how it plays out uh, round by round. All right. Well, hopefully we get another chance to chat to you after the end of the next round at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Dan, anyone you'd like to thank before we let you go? Sure is, Reese. Big thanks to all the guys at Drop In Motorsport um, and you know, a couple of new guys joining the team as of late. So be keen to uh, introduce them uh, in the next couple of days and weeks once we get our social media game together. Um, but also yeah, to, to Lockhart, Dylan and, and Dan uh, for being here and being part of the series as always with us. Um, and yeah, hopefully look forward to seeing them have a better round next time out. Um, and then to uh, a couple of guys also helping us out in the background tonight watching on. But uh, the team partners in Coast Engineering Solutions, Bowler Media, Hybrid Racing Simulations and Revolution Race Gear. Big thanks to all of them for continuing to support us uh, in one way or another uh, this year. And uh, big thanks to the Super Speed team for putting on the, the racing action here. And uh, yeah, look forward to the, everything comes back in two weeks and uh, watching back, of course, uh, this lovely broadcast here. Absolutely. Big thanks to Dan Yeaman for joining us in the broadcast booth here. Finally, we are going to come away with a, a chat to Daniel Finney, who managed to grab the M class win here tonight. Daniel, that was uh, certainly a battle for you. It seemed like you were in the mix all night long. Oh, it was, yeah, it was crazy. I wasn't getting past too many people. It was mostly spent looking in the mirror, but no, that was hectic. Yeah, certainly was. How are you finding the track? Um, we've spoken to a few guys already about how the stiffness of these cars and the bumps of the track just clash with each other, and it's really a case of just keeping it out of the wall. Yeah, you've got to be so gentle, like you say, over the bumps of suspension. If you are pushing the car, it's so easy to get a slide, and normally you'd you know gather it up, you might lose a few tenths here. <laughs> You're knocking the right rear, the right left in the... Uh, in, in, in the barriers so it's absolutely unforgiving so yeah just had to drive well within my limits keep it out of trouble and um i think i actually got zero x for, for both races though which is remarkable for me <laughs> jesus wow okay yeah That's, i don't know how uh... i did that <laughs> Wow, well, finally there was a clean driver award for the series. That would, uh, that, uh, that's a fantastic achievement. Congratulations on that, Dan. Thank but, you. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking forward to the next round of the championship, I think uh, you'll be 
very happy to uh, see the end of the concrete barriers right by the racetrack as we go to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park next round. Beautiful, fast flowing circuit, which should be good for these prototypes. Oh, definitely. If ever there was a circuit that was made for it, then um, yeah, it's it's most sport with all the high speed sweepers. Um, I must admit, it's not a circuit that I am overly familiar with. Um, I've done a few laps there in the past, but it's not something I've really raced at. So again, I'll be uh, putting on my Sud speed gloves and getting on the practice server as much as I can in the next two weeks, I think. Indeed. Well, big congratulations once again for another great result, Daniel. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before we let you go? Uh, yes, a massive shout out to everyone who supports me on YouTube and was with me in chat for that race. Uh, lots of people telling me what strategy I should go on. Uh, ultimately, there was no consensus, so I just did whatever I felt like. <laughs> but no, uh, massive thanks to Next Level Racing as well. And of course, uh, Suit Speed for hosting the series and for the gloves and the t-shirts and all the lovely stuff they put out for us, guys. Indeed. Big thanks to Daniel Finney for joining us here in the booth. And that's going to bring things to an end for tonight, Jay. Of course, as we mentioned, next round of the championship is at Mo Sport. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's one of my favorite tracks in the entire world. Always fun, no matter what category. I feel like we don't get, go here anywhere near enough. We used to come here a lot back in the day, but uh, obviously a lot more tracks on iRacing now means we don't come to this circuit anywhere near as much. Um, can we uh, can we put forward a suggestion that we come here in every single series we cover from now on? Um, yes, I would be yes. more than happy with that. I think back to some of the classics that we've had at this track over the years. Um, it is one of the most iconic tracks in the world, as you said, but it's also an iconic iRacing circuit with huge moments throughout the Oz and Z Team Racing community. We have the potential to make another in a couple of weeks' time. Absolutely, we do. Well, we want to thank you all for watching. Big thanks to the crew at Suit Speed, Rich and Chris, for putting this all on in the first place. Once again, remember, use the code SPECTATOR at uh, checkout on suitspeed.com for 10% off, including free shipping. I'm Reese Gardner, Jay Kennedy with me in the comms box and directing behind the scenes. We're SimSpeed TV. We'll see you next time.